Hello people, in this video let's look at the complications of blood transfusion. So you take blood and what and all can go wrong. So basically they have classified it as immune, infectious and complications of massive blood transfusion. If you take massive blood transfusion, there will be some other major issues that you will have to know. Otherwise, immune. Immune means what uh, you are not able to adjust to the blood that they are giving. So either there can be hemolytic reactions or non-hemolytic reactions. Like uh, the blood group itself can mismatch, right? You can have a major incompatibility, right? Or you can have a minor incompatibility. We'll come to that. Or there could be non-hemolytic reactions, guys. Like you can have an, a febrile reaction that the, your temperature can rise, right? Fever, etc. Or you could have an allergic reaction. Or there could be an acute lung injury. So this is called as trolley. Transfusion-related acute lung injury. So lungs can get injured. Focus people. Where are we? We are looking at the complications of blood transfusion. So you have in that, um, we are looking at the immune ones. And then you can have congestive cardiac failure. So the lung, the heart, so many things are affected. Coming to infectious causes, uh, you can have, uh, you can get AIDS, hepatitis, malaria, syphilis, right? You can get then complications of major bl massive blood transfusion. What exactly? is massive blood transfusion you should know and what can that result in it can result in disseminated intravascular coagulation right if i'm not wrong if there is massive blood transfusion there can be volume overload ion can increase calcium level can significantly decrease they are saying okay because of the citrate which is added as a preservative in this blood that they are giving you so in general these are the complications of blood transfusion let us go into the details of each one what do you say people Okay, so let us look at the immune reactions. So under this, they are saying hemolytic, that is there is lysis of uh, uh, RBCs, let's say major incompatibility, incompatibility, that is uh, in major incompatibility reaction is because of ABO mismatch, right? So here they are saying they are giving the mismatched blood due to technical error, sampling, labeling problem, dispatching problem. So that can, that can lead to intravascular hemolysis. So if this happens that they give you the absolute wrong blood, what can happen? You can have blood in urine and that is called as hematuria. You can have pain in the loins. Okay, You can have bilateral pain in the loins. You can have fever with chills and rigors. Oliguria you can have because your renal tubules are going to be blocked, right? Blocking of the renal tubules can happen. You can have oliguria that is less urine output. And uh, this blockage can finally, you can it can lead to acute renal tubular necrosis, okay? So how will you treat this condition? Uh, as a doctor, listen guys, you will have to stop the blood, send it to the blood bank and ask them to recheck it. You will have to repeat the coagulation profile, you will have to give IV fluids, you will have to monitor urine output, you will have to check the urine for uh, hemoglobin, then you will have to give diuresis with flu furosemide, you want to remove you want to remove some fluid okay, by giving diuretics so that the kidney gets uh, flushed. So that is why they are talking about uh, diuretics that is furosemide and mannitol. Okay guys, did you get it? So what will you do? You will stop the blood, you will uh, give IV fluids to this person, you will give diuretics so that uh, 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 the kidney will get flushed, right? Uh, you'll give furosemide and what? Manitol, etc. So you will flush the kidneys. Then, what else did they tell? You will, uh, that's it. You will just uh, check the, monitor the urine output, etc. You will check the urine for hemoglobin, okay? Now, let us, uh, why hemoglobin? Because it is, hemolysis is happening. Hemoglobin is coming out. Now, let us talk about Minor incompatibility reaction. Where are we people? Just focus. Where exactly are we? Minor incompatibility reaction. So where are we? So in complications of blood transfusion under immune, under hemolytic one, we have the major and minor. We have finished the major. Now we are going to the minor. So they are talking about extravascular hemolysis here. This is a minor condition uh, compared to the major one. Here, what will happen? It occurs due to the antibodies, okay? To some minor antigens, some antibodies will come and uh, attack. That's it, okay? Uh, this, these people will have some malaise, jaundice and uh, fever, okay? Again, why jaundice? Because it is hemolytic, right? And treatment is supportive. Whatever supportive treatment only you will give, okay? So, basically, some antibodies to some minor antigens will lead to extravascular hemolysis, right? This is a mild reaction only. You will give supportive treatment. What exactly these people will have? Malice, jaundice and fever. You will give supportive treatment. 
Thus, we are done with the immune one, right? In that, we are done with the hemolytic one, actually. Now, let us look at the non-hemolytic uh, reaction, guys, uh, where there is actually no break of the RBC, right? Non-hemolytic. Let's look at those. You have febrile reaction because of um, we are looking here, guys. Focus here. We are looking at the non-hemolytic reactions. So basically febrile reaction guys, so basically occurs due to the sensitization of WBCs and platelets. So the platelets and WBCs have become sensitized, okay. And um, uh, there is increase in the temperature, okay. But there is no hemolysis, you should understand this. So what will you do here? You will give leukocyte depleted blood. So you should, better to give leukocyte depleted blood. So they want to not, they don't want to give WBCs, etc. Right. Okay. Then uh, allergic reaction guys, focus, where are we? Febrile over, febrile was because of WBCs and platelets. Don't give that that they are saying. Just give whatever is required to that patient. Don't give WBCs and all. That will help. Coming to allergic reaction, guys. There can be allergy to plasma products. Okay. This will manifest as chills, rigors and rashes. So, you should give antihistamines to these people. What antihistamines will you give? You can give. You can give. Chlorpheniramine. Okay. So... Where are we here? So, allergic reaction is because of what? Plasma products. There you will give antihistamines like chlorpheniramine, malleate. Okay. Now, coming to injury to the lung. So, transfusion related acute lung injury. Guys, wake up and tell me what is T-R-A-L-E? Trali, trali. T-R-A-L-E. L-I, L-I. What am I saying? T-R-A-L-I. Trali. Transfusion related acute lung injury. L is lung. That much if you understand. We are talking about blood transfusion. Transfusion related acute lung injury. So what happens to the lungs? Because you are doing blood transfusion. What can happen to the lungs of this guy? Poor guy's lungs. What is going to happen? Let us look at this trolley. Trolley. So here are his lungs and let's see what happens. It is a rare complication occurring within 6 hours of transfusion due to the presence of anti-leukocyte antibodies in the transfused plasma. So this plasma which is coming, you can see here this uh, plant, uh, blood is coming here. In this what is there? Anti-leukocyte antibodies. Some antibodies are coming here. Let me draw some antibodies here. Some antibodies are coming in this blood which are against this guy's RBCs, anti leukocyte antibodies in the transfused plasma which are causing patients' white cells to aggregate in the pulmonary circulation. So, in the pulmonary circulation, that is from the heart to the lungs and lungs to the heart, is it? Pulmonary circulation, the white cells, let us say white blood cells, isn't it? WBCs, white cells aggregate. So, this will lead to the degranulation of the leukocytes causing increased capillary permeability and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So, there will be pulmonary edema, but this will not be because of the heart. Okay, so this is non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Focus guys. So, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Why? Because there is degranulation of the leukocytes, which causes the increased capillary permeability. Obviously, if permeability is becomes more, there is going to be edema. Okay. The symptoms may vary from mild dyspnea to full-blown acute respiratory distress syndrome. So, either this guy will have some mild dyspnea he can have, right? He's not able to breathe properly. That's what is dyspnea, right? Mild dyspnea he can have or he can have a full-blown acute respiratory distress syndrome, okay? So, you will have to give supportive therapy again to so see that it will resolve. So, what did you see? The blood that you transfuse can have some antibodies okay in the plasma which will attack the WBCs of the patient where in the pulmonary circulation this will cause increased capillary permeability leading to non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema how will you handle this t-r-a-l-i you will have to give um, uh, some supportive therapy basically he can either have a mild dyspnea to a full-blown acute respiratory distress syndrome very good now let us go to the last one in the immune and the non-hemolytic okay so uh, come on tell me non-hemolytic what and all you saw non-hemolytic you saw febrile allergic uh, trally and now we are going to the fourth one that is congestive cardiac failure very good people wake up Okay, let's go to the congestive cardiac failure, guys. So, guys, this one, no, congestive cardiac failure, they're telling if people have anemia, right? And suddenly you go and give this person whole blood. Okay. What are you giving? 
given whole blood whole blood means you are giving rbc wbc everything whole blood okay In that to what you did you gave rapidly now what will happen this person can go into congestive cardiac failure so that's why they are saying you should do slow transfusion you should give furosemide so that there's no volume overload isn't it packed cell infusion is the choice in these patients so you don't have to give whole blood packed cell infusion means what it's going to be more concentrated right you will give the packed cells i have a feeling when they are saying packed cells they actually are referring to packed red blood cells only so when this person has anemia so why do you want to give whole blood and give volume overload just give packed red blood cells that's what they look uh, they are telling okay you only going to give rbcs okay so um, don't give whole blood okay you give what you give packed cells and also if you are giving whole blood or whatever they are saying give it slowly and you should give furosemide so that you can maintain the uh, manage the volume overload okay let's be done with the uh, major chunk now let us go to the small ones where are we we are looking at uh, uh, complications of blood transfusion we are done with the immune ones now let us go to the infectious ones okay this is very easy for you you will definitely right because of uh, blood transfusion a person can get hepatitis aids malaria syphilis so poor guy what and all he'll get he'll get malaria he can get malaria syphilis aids hepatitis etc they can be transmitted anyways you will uh, screen the blood right but still there are chances that the person can get okay so you should screen the blood for these diseases which diseases did they say A lot of diseases you can screen for, but AIDS, hepatitis, malaria, and syphilis. Okay, prevention is better than cure. That's what they are adding. You also write that in the exam. Now let us come to the last point here, guys. Complications of massive blood transfusion. Why will you give a person massive blood transfusion? Hmm. Think. So basically, if they are having massive bleeding, or they, or you know, um. for whatever surgeries etc you have to give lot of blood right so what do you uh, call as massive blood transfusion what is the proto what is the term, what is the definition of massive blood transfusion guys so there are like four things that they are telling anyways uh, look at this so basically in 5 minutes you are giving over 500 ml or within 1 hour or something you are giving um, um, greater than 4 rbc units or there is something else called as in 6 hours you are giving greater than half the patient's blood volume and there is one more th that is within 24 hours you are giving greater than one blood volume or greater than 10 units of packed cells in 24 hours so four things okay 5 minutes something you are giving one hour something 6 hours something and 24 hours something so four of these together this is the definition of bl uh, massive blood transfusion okay So, if you are doing any one of this, it can be blood massive blood transfusion. Okay. <clears throat> so they are saying if there is a blood loss greater than one fifty mL per minute with hemodynamic instability and there is need for transfusion, they are also calling it as massive blood transfusion. Okay. Massive blood loss can occur when whenever there is trauma or postpartum hemorrhage or during major surgeries. Okay. so what can happen what are the problems that is what we have come here for this video right this video is about the complications of massive blood transfusion is it too much take a break <sighs> very good so the problems itself are mentioned in this uh, table you can see here so there can be citrate toxicity there can be hypocalcemia this person can uh, the calcium levels can become very low because of what because of citrate which is a preservative in the blood thrombocytopenia so um, thrombocytes uh, means what our platelets becomes less is it clotting factors can become less and there can be acute lung injury standard uh, lung stuff is written here right so in patients with massive bleeding what you should do is uh, you want massive blood transfusion so you should intimate the blood bank immediately okay to activate massive transfusion protocol that is called as mtp so i was thinking mtp so many uh, terms are there in uh, medicine like medical termination of pregnancy now they are saying it is massive transfusion protocol okay so mtp here means what massive transfusion protocol guys focus a blood sample you should send for cross matching 
right and you will request for what initially you will ask for four units of o negative red blood cells only red blood cells okay you will ask for o negative red blood cells how many four units okay and after this if mtp is requested the blood bank releases the blood products in different boxes look at this guys release of blood products on activation of mtp so what are they talking about here packed rbcs 1234 so what is this box o oh, boxes box 1 box 2 box 3 box 4 ffp fresh frozen plasma as a platelet cryo precipitate so they are giving a lot of boxes with a lot of things in it so where are we people massive blood transfusion <clears throat> so we told you that there are four boxes and blood bank will release the blood products in different boxes okay the blood products what you will do you will obtain box by box as necessary okay so four boxes one by one box you will collect from the blood bank the blood products uh, if the bleeding stops then you will intimate the blood bank and you will um, uh, terminate this mtp so if the bleeding stops for this guy no need of any further boxes so you will terminate this mtp if bleeding continues this box 3 and 4 are alternately requested for so you will need 3 and 4 box if it is the patient is continuing to bleed or you need more blood okay and then what will you do when you are giving massive blood to this guy you will have to monitor acid base status hemoglobin you have to main, manage uh, you will have to check platelets you will have to check because here they have written thrombocytopenia could be a problem isn't it then pro thrombin time you have to check because clotting factors can become deficient remember right then you'll also have to check the activated partial thromboplastin time you'll have to check the fibrinogen all that for blood clotting you'll also have to check the serum calcium why people because of the citrate which is there in the blood as a preservative the patient can go into hypocalcemia so you have to monitor all this what and all will you check for you'll check for hemoglobin you'll check for platelets you'll check for clotting factors prothrombin time activated partial thromboplastin time fibrinogen they will check for calcium right all this you will check for acid base status okay guys one thing you have to remember because of massive blood transfusion there can be dic that is disseminated intravascular coagulation dic <coughs> so what happens when you take so much blood all the coagulation factors factors of coagulation get used up okay i'm thinking because you are adding anticoagulants or something Uh, to this blood that they are giving so i'm uh, all the factors of coagulation are used up so that will result in what in bleeding it will dis result in this uh, bleeding right bleeding disorder it will result in this so what actually happens is there will be severe a fibrinogenemia okay fibri fibrinogenemia so a fibrinogenemia so what will you have to give these people you have to replace with fibrinogen as simple as that cryo precipitate and other clotting factors you'll have to give these people okay so what will you do you'll have to give these people fibrinogen that's it otherwise they will go into bleeding that's it okay so how will you treat this um, disseminated intravascular coagulation you'll have to give them fibrinogen with other clotting factors because these people have a fibrinogenemia that's it so we are done with the complications of blood transfusion we looked at uh, immune that is hemolytic non hemolytic where you have febrile allergic uh, trali congestive cardiac failure then you have infectious where you mentioned only four diseases they told you to remember hiv malaria syphilis hepatitis b then complications of massive blood transfusion you should know what massive blood transfusion is and what and all it can really uh, really uh, lead to hypocalcemia coagulation factors can go uh, less that can be disseminated intravascular coagulation that can be acute lung injury then one more thing they told you was uh, one more word i was there what is this? thrombocytopenia yeah so that's it guys we have completed uh, complications of blood transfusion in this video bye bye